Romance at a glance. Uh huh. Romance at a glance. What you say? Romance at a glance. Go ahead, girl. Hello and welcome to Romance at a Glance. I am your host, Shawnee, and I am here to give a shout out to our newest patron, Natalie A. Natalie, thank you so much for believing in us and for becoming part of our nasty, nasty family. I'd also like to say that this episode was recorded before the United States elections, and we now know the results of that election. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are the new president and vice president-elect. We're so excited that the elections have gone the way they have, and we look forward to holding our new leaders accountable for their actions as well. We have a lot of work to do in the United States and around the world, actually, um, to hold our leaders accountable and to get equality for all. So without further ado, let's jump into our episode, Unsung Heroes by Suzanne Brockman. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Romance at a Glance. I'm your host, Bridget, and with me, as always, is actually not Shawnee. It's my sister, Anne, reprising her season three co-hosting. Hi, Anne. Hello, Bridget. I really appreciate you being here, especially in light of the fact that, guys, we are recording this on Thursday after the election. Still don't know results. We are both a little bit stressed, but less stressed than we were on Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, We actually were supposed to record this on Tuesday. And I was like, you know what? Can't do it. Cannot do it. <laughs> we gotta move it. We cannot do it. And so here we are. Anne was gracious enough to move it to Thursday. And so here we are about to talk about the unsung hero with one of our OG romance novelists, novelists, Suzanne Brockman. And yes, was it fun to dip your toes back into the troublemakers world? Uh, okay. S- yes and no. So I think back in, let's say, early COVID times. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> so sad that that's a thing. Um, no, it's, it's probably in July, actually. I um, read a few of, or reread a few of the ones that I thought were my favorites. And I was like, huh, huh. Like, <laughs> I'm not sure if I liked these as much as I liked them in the first time I read them. Um, and I feel the same way about this book. So, uh, and yet, every time I think of Suzanne Brockman and the, uh, like and the Troubleshooters series, like I still get happy. It's like I remember the early two thousands romance novel reader I was. Yeah, I find that I get so much nostalgic joy from reading these books. So I actually just before we interviewed Suzanne Brockman read Hot Target, which is book number eight again, mm-hmm. which has Chief Cosmo and Jane yeah. the producer. It's the first time that Jules Cassidy has his subplot. Um or his sub not his subplot, his sub romantic arc. And yeah. it was so good. Okay, so I want to talk about this book, but we are you guys gonna kind of dip in and out of the whole series and just talk about the nostalgia factor of having been reading this series for 20 years. Yeah. Um, you know, there's 17 books. It's, you know, she's one of the titans of suspense romance. And it was a pleasure to interview her. If you guys missed that on Tuesday, make sure you go back and check it out. It was an awesome interview. She was so candid. We talked all about her journey of writing for, um, of all about her journey of trying to include more and more diversity and how hard she pushed every book to have more side characters who are gay or maybe an off camera, you know, off the page friend or an off the page brother-in-law or something. And then slowly like those people became the people of color who were actually on the team or they slowly became the love interest or they slowly became Jules Cassidy who then got his own book and it was like a huge deal. So mm-hmm. uh, if you've missed that interview, make sure you check it out. And right now, me and my sister are going to get it a popping. What, what? <laughs> <laughs> what, what? Let's do this. Romance at a glance. Uh-huh. Romance at a glance. What you say now? Romance at a glance. Go ahead, girl. So as we said, you guys, we are talking unsung hero, Suzanne Brockman. So the reason that I chose book one, first of all, I thought Shawnee was going to do this episode with me also with Anne. And then Shawnee was like, I think you should just do it with your sister because the episode where we reviewed in season three, Heatstroke by Tessa Bailey. She thought that episode was hilarious and loved editing it. So she's like, you guys should do it alone. You guys are so funny. 
So we decided to do that. And I chose Suzanne Brockman because we are, you know, around Veterans Day. And so we are supporting our Navy SEALs and our, you know, people in the military. And Suzanne Brockman has always been a big champion of those and has written about them. Mm-hmm. I did choose book one though, because honestly, I didn't remember it. And now that I have read a few of the other ones before the interview, I actually regret it because my it's cons- not the strongest one. It's not the strongest one. It's actually not very suspenseful. No. <laughs> which is weird because the later books are incredibly, they're all suspense. I mean, the later books, or at least most of them, there's like an assassination plot or a bomb that's like, ticking the whole time and they have to like, or they're in foreign countries or they're like, you know, there's stalkers and there's snipers. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's just like a lot more danger throughout. Whereas this book started off with a bang where he's like on a mission, but then he. A literal bang. A literal bang blows him up (laughs) (laughs) and he gets knocked unconscious. (laughs) Guys, I'm just sliding right into the snops. I didn't even warn you. He gets knocked unconscious. This is Tom. He's a Navy SEAL lieutenant, baddest of the bad mofos. And he's actually in a coma for a few months. Team 16. Yeah. And wakes up, thankfully, and gets a month of leave. So he goes home to visit his great uncle, or actually his uncle. No, he's uncle. forced to take a month of leave. He's forced, he that's goes, true. Because he true. goes off on his commanding That's true. Officer. He has a little anger management problem <laughs> due to the head injury. Gets a forced <laughs> month of leave. Goes to see his, is it his uncle or great uncle? I want to say great uncle because he's so old, but I think it's just his uncle. I think, I think it's, it's his, his great uncle. I think it's, oh, I think, no. I think, I think, I think it's, it's his, his uncle. It's his, it's his, his mom's brother. Yeah, so goes to visit his uncle who's super old and has been best friends with, the guy whose land he takes care of for like 65 years since they were in world war II together as young 18 and 20 year olds. And of course the man next door has his sweet, sweet daughter next door who is now a dope ass doctor and good for her. She's a, can I just point out something yeah, quickly? Please. So they met in like 1942 or 44 or something like that. Right. Mm-hmm. That's not 65 years. This book was published in 2000. So like, I I'm think so, I just made, I made up 65. I think they say they were friends for 60 years. I no, there's like, there's a, there's like literally a thing in the book where they're like, he at the very end says to Kelly, I think we should try to beat the record of 65 years of like being best friends or something. Oh yeah. So wait, 65, anyway. 65 years would have been 2010, 2010, right? Yes. It should have been 55 years. Yeah. I was also, he would have been super old because now that I'm thinking about this, if he fought in World War II, he would have been born in 1925. And Tom Pawlenty was born in like, let's like, say 1970. And so it feels like it should have been his great uncle. He was born, he was 36 in 2000. So he would have yeah. been 60, 60, born in 64. Yeah, but his his great uncle in 64 would have been 40 some already. I guess he could have had a young, much younger sister, I suppose. Yeah. Um I or she had Okay, so so there's very so okay, so he basically when he's <laughs> arriving in the Boston airport sees this guy who looks vaguely like this terrorist that he had tracked years before, but he does something like a tick, you know, like everyone has their little ticks, the way they always move or the way they always do things. And he throws this luggage off this thing. And it's the same exact way this guy always flicked things like, and so he's like, I know it's him, but he clearly had some sort of plastic surgery. He's kind of, he's on a, a killed in action, presumed dead list. And so everyone thinks he's crazy, but he's like, I know it is. So he flies in a few of his team members and they think they're targeting this big world war II celebration of his uncle and his uncle's best friend who is Kelly's dad. And, but despite the fact that that's like in the background, it's not really in the story. There's like barely any of it. There's barely the end until the very, very end. I mean, there's only action really in the last three chapters, maybe four chapters. There's more action in the flashbacks than there are. Yeah, for sure. Which was, and Oh, and then there's like a whole series of flashbacks of, the romance and sort of story of the world war II, um, the guys in world war II and this French woman they met and both fell in love with. So 
there was, I guess there was action in those scenes, but in terms of the main couple, there really was not an element of suspenseful danger that the rest of the series really delivers, which I was missing out on. Cause I enjoy that. I enjoy, like, I know it's all going to end out. Okay. Hello. It's romance. That's what I like, but I like that. How are they going to get out of it? You know? Well, and also like, there's <clears throat> I, the, the kind of the joke about like a summer camp romance is like a whole year of dating. Yeah. And I feel like a suspense romance is the same way. Like you can suspend 100%. the, you could suspend like the reality of like these people have known each other for eight days. Yeah. And they're, they're like, well, they've had eight assassination attempts. <laughs> they both have jumped off a cliff together into frigid water and survived in the wild. <laughs> their trust, their trust yeah. is like the off trust, the charts. Hundy, the trust yeah. building. They're and not, so- <laughs> they're not like shyly, like getting to know each other. He's like, what's your deepest fear? And she's like snakes. And he's like, I'll take care of it. Duh, duh, duh. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> for the rest of our lives yeah um yeah, yeah like so I I did and now on the other hand because they have known each other for 18 years or whatever it mm-hmm. is um they they do have some already of that building of that trust of that for sure right and so <sighs> The romance, I didn't you know, mind, I didn't didn't mind the way they were romance. Necessarily, but it definitely, I was just like, oh, like I, I know I, I wanted the suspense. <laughs> I did not mind the way the romance unfolded. I actually enjoyed the fact that he was three years older than her. And so when she was 15 and he was 18, he basically was like, she was like, meet me in the treehouse, And they just had this hot make out. And he was like, I have to get the fuck out of here and go a month early to basic training, right? I'm taking this girl's virginity and I don't want to do that. She's too young, but I will do it if I stay and I have to leave immediately. And he like shook her hand goodbye. And she was just like, what the fuck's going on? And he on? left her a note. And he left her a note that was like, I can't. And she was like, what? Because she was 15 and like didn't and know And that was, was the last on. time they'd seen each and other. And that was the last time. They'd seen each other from afar, I think a little bit. No. A couple times, like early on. Really? I think they had seen each other a couple times early on when he came back, but not wow. for like 10 years. So it had yeah. been a really long time. Um, I was fine with their romance. I My favorite part of the whole book, though, was his niece, Mallory. I agree. She and okay. David were awesome. So there's a whole subplot about his niece, Mallory, who his sister, Mallory's mom, is, you know, just kind of like a like what you would consider maybe a stereotypical towny in a rich, you know, sort of tourist area, fuck up who just like, can't hold down a job is kind of bouncing from dude to dude. None of them are good news. Um, you know, rumors about her being a prostitute or, um, sort of all around. And Mallory is a good kid, but like, you know, very angry and closed off and like kind of has a fuck you attitude. And And she's the one that has to be like the responsible one between her. Right. Right. And then David is this like Uber nerd. And I really appreciated that he was described not as being like an Uber nerd who then fixes his hair and he's a smoke show. Like I was happy that he was like an Uber nerd. I mean, she fixes his hair at the end, but he's still an Uber nerd and doesn't like his hair is nicer, but he's still kind of dorky looking and she loves him. And that's the important part. And basically what happens is he's a graphic novelist and he sees her and he's like, oh my God, she is this character I'm writing. And so he befriends her and he's like, I don't want to be a creep, but this is what I do. Here's my work. Here's my book. It's published. It's for real. Like, I want you to come to my house. I'll pay you to do a photo shoot session so that I can draw you and take pictures of you so that I can draw you for the thing. And they slowly become friends and they look slow- like, it's such a sweet, I was all about it. And I was like, this whole was, book could have just been about them. I know. Totally. I mean, Yeah. Like, and I I said that, um, like, they were just so enduring. And I really like how Sam Brockman lets her characters grow. Mm -hmm. And that even though they were, you know, not even a third of this book. Yeah. But like, uh, although they were a pretty good chunk. They were were a good chunk because they help at the end, too. Yeah, they do. Um, you see like both people get to grow into themselves, which I think is important. I, it's like nothing bothers it's, me more 
than if a character is the same exact thing at the beginning and the, as the end. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I think in all of her books, like uh, in the interview, I was talking to Suzanne about, she calls herself Suze. She said I could call her Suze. So I'm going to you Ooh, guys. Suze. It was so exciting. I was freaking out. <laughs> so Suze was telling me that um, one of, actually I was telling her, one of my favorite things of the future books is that Sam Starrett, Mm-hmm. who was actually introduced in this book. And he's like a Texan. He's just like kind of, not kind of, he is a bigot. He is very close minded you know, hasn't experienced the world, um, loves, falls immediately into lust slash love with Alyssa Lockhart, who, or Locke, who becomes, who currently is in the military, but becomes an FBI agent and Jules Cassidy's partner pretty quickly. Um, but his arc through, I think it takes them like five or six books to have their happily ever after his arc of, at least of not loving, you know, not liking Jules or respecting him because he's gay to like begrudgingly accepting he's great at his job to depending on him, to befriending him, to becoming his best friend. And like, they are like, love each other. Mm -hmm like that evolution and then the evolution of how he like treats women and treats Alyssa and like writes his wrongs and treats his um, first what, wife treats versus his first how he like, yeah. Right. Learns it's from that. like, it's, it's such a lovely thing to see that she didn't leave him as like a stereotypical bigot from Texas. She allowed him to meet someone which I think happens to a lot of people. You meet someone and all of a sudden it isn't like, oh, I don't know anyone like that. It's like, oh, well, I know, I know Jules and Jules is dumb and wait, okay, well then maybe these, this group of people isn't just a stereotype. Now I have at least one person who I love, who's that group of people. And I think yeah, humanizing. Helps, yeah, really humanize it. So I totally agree. I like, I like her writing. I think she's a great writer, even though this is not my favorite of her books. Um, mm-hmm. And I thought they started troublemakers in this. The other reason I chose this one, Anne, is because when I read the description, they don't start I was troublemakers like, for like many, many books. I totally forgot that. Because they're, SEAL, they're SEAL team 16, like for a very long time. Well, actually I for know. like the entire series. But, but I thought it was like, I thought he left much earlier and it was SEAL Team 16, but he, like, anytime they were on leave, they would come work for him. Mm-mm. Because he was like, their commanding officer for a long time, which is why I, they all leave. Yeah. Well, I know, but like, he's their commanding officer in this book in like these flashbacks. So in my mind, I was like, oh, we have to read this book also because this is like when they start the company. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> <It's here too." laughs> nope. They introduce False. everyone. False. False. Oh my god. You goodness. actually get introduced to very few characters. Yeah, you only meet Jazz briefly, Alyssa briefly. And basically all you know Damn about Alyssa briefly. is that if she wasn't a woman, she'd be in the SEALs. And she's the best sharpshooter man or woman. Um, and then you meet Jazz briefly. You meet, I guess you meet Wildcard briefly, and you meet um, you, no, you just like hear about Wildcard. In the flashback, yeah. And you get then, descriptions of them, I guess. Not really meet them so much. Yeah, you you hear a couple names. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. Who is your favorite one that you just recently reread? Wildcard has always been like one of my big faves. Yeah. Uh, I also love Muldoon. Oh, I don't. I am sure I read his book originally, but I could not tell you the plot right now. That's the one where um, Sam and I totally remember forgetting his wife's name um she the, beca- friends the neighbor ibrahim e- and they have the plot she ends up being the reason that guns get snuck on to the base oh and, yeah and it's not ibrahim that uh or abraham no i think it's ibrahim um uh he ends up not being the terrorist but the um the kind of uh, oh, the kind of slightly creepy, too much attention mm-hmm. friend that kind of befriends her also mm-hmm. is is the one. Um, and then Joan, I think it's DaCosta, uh, her, her brother is their neighbor who has uh, schizophrenia mm-hmm. and like hides in his house under the, um, under the hat and 
he's the one that's saying like they're watching us, which is actually a truth, but she thinks he's just being paranoid and crazy, but it actually is the people trying to like sneak things in and kind of somewhat recruit her and use her for their plot. And then her own dad, her dad, her dad, her uncle, I can't remember. He's, he's like the old, he was one of the original seals, the frogman. So he gets mm-hmm. honored at that thing where there's the, the, the assassination attempt. And, um, but Joan falls in love with Mike and she's the one, she lives in Washington, DC. And then he lives in San, San Diego. And so they don't know how it's going to work. And she's got like, like a t- total I, hang up about him being like baby faced and like slightly younger yeah. than her. It's like just a couple oh of years. Oh my God. Now that you just said baby faced and younger than her, I totally remember. She's always wearing the pencil skirts and he's always yes. pulling them up. They had hot sex scenes. They, they that's the one where they did it in front of the mirror. Right. And he made her yes. watch. Oh, yes. 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 Great. And it's one. the one where like, you guys, I love how Anne's explain 10 minutes of plot to me. And she just goes, <laughs> he's younger. And I was like, I got the sex scene. I recall. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> yeah, you guys, that is no. a great one. I will link it and I will throw that quote onto the website for this episode at Romance at a Glance. And it is hot. That is a hot scene. Yeah, it's really good. They're in her hotel, uh, room. hotel room and she's got like these hangups because she's like not a perfect stick figure and she's slightly older than him and he like makes her watch while he goes. I think my fingers are for the match or maybe while they have sex or both. I think I he's know. fucking her too. Um, I yeah. think it's both, but he also like one of my favorite things about that one was also um, the scene where uh, she's not super athletic mm-hmm. and he has been instructed because he's injured. Um, he has been instructed to be her for liaison. And mm-hmm. so he, he makes her go on the ropes course. Oh yeah. Like to climb the thing mm-hmm. and he, he just lets go and then just like grabs hold again and like drops like multiple feet, freaks mm-hmm. her out. And she like is so angry, yeah. so livid with him. And that, I don't know why that scene has always stuck in my head of just being like, he's trying to show off and in the yeah. process yeah. really pisses her off. Yeah. But he's like, Almost like scares he does her away it completely. <laughs> But he does it because he's like, you think I'm this child. And what you don't know is how many hours I've spent. This is my job. Yeah. I'm very yeah. good at it. Do not yeah. disrespect me. Yeah. Um, yeah. He like same- puts her in place. He's like, I'm yeah. a grown ass man. You're calling me a child, but I'm a grown ass man in the Navy yeah. SEALs. Yeah. Ma'am. And he always ma'ams her. Yeah. He I her all the- personally don't like to be ma'ams, but in books, I love a good ma'aming. I love it. <laughs> like the right character giving that like, kind of like, it's almost like a, like, like a subtle, it, it could go two ways. It could be like a man, like, oh, I know you're a woman out of there, ma'am, but I got to be polite. And it's also kind of like a little bit of like, almost like a little bit of a kind of like a fuck you, but oh no, well, I'm not going to, okay. I'm not going to give you the time of day that ma'am, like, if you're not going to treat me right, I'm going to ma'am you all day long. I love it. I love it. Yeah. In real life though, if someone tried to ma'am you, I'd be like, you got to stop. Unless it also depends on how comfortable they come out. Like I've noticed, like you can tell the people who it's just like second nature for them to do it to like all women, because that's just what they were raised. Right. Right. Which has a very different effect than the people who have to like, I don't know. It's like, they have to remember to do it because they think it's polite, but they weren't raised that way. And like, and then you're just like, you just sound awkward and you made me feel bad. (laughs) But Especially since like I started getting called ma'am when I was like 18 by some people. And I was like, hey, what, what? Like maybe miss, maybe call me miss. Like, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't think I got ma'ams until that's, not, I mean, no, I rarely, I'm, but like some you parts of the country get people, right? Yeah. I don't get ma'am drafted in Los Angeles. Uh-huh. Occasionally. So speaking of age, so in this book, they're the same age as I am, right? It's the both. Yeah. Well, he's 36 and she's only 33, but um, and, uh, I remember the first time I read this cause I was like in college, right. Being like, they're old <laughs> for real. And now I'm just like, 
oh, they're not old. <laughs> like this is completely yeah. normal. Yeah. Um, they're not, they're not 22 year olds falling in love and getting married immediately. They're grown ass people. Yeah. I, so one thing in this book that I always think is interesting is she at the beginning is like, oh, I'm very stressed. My dad is dying. He's been my childhood through high school, through my life crush. He still looks fine as hell. He's single. I'm single. Like, you know what? I just would like him to fuck my brains out for the next month. That sounds Mm -hmm. swell. And then we can just be on our way. Mm -hmm. And he gets all up in his feelings about the fact that she wants a booty call. And I'm like, you've given her no reason to suspect that you would want anything. Like you haven't seen her. She doesn't know you. Like, like it's reasonable. I feel like that was a reasonable thing for her to like come on to him and be like, Hey, I think we should go to pound town. Mm-hmm. And I feel like he was like, Oh, you only want me for that. And I was like, so it felt like a weird reaction. Cause it felt like he did didn't it? say, he didn't say like, Hey, cause he was like, Oh, you just think I'm the same person I've always been. But I think she wasn't in my mind. She wasn't like, at that point in the story, later in the story, she is kind of, she does treat him as his old self and doesn't like, but at that point in the story, at the beginning, I didn't feel like she was treating him as like a fuck boy in the sense that she thought he wasn't worth a relationship. I think she was like, logistically, like this man doesn't live here, never comes home. I live here. I'm not planning to move. And I am in a lot of stress. He's attractive. I'm attractive. We both clearly well, one he had other. just gotten done like in the very first meeting he had just gotten done being like oh i'm single my lifestyle doesn't really allow me to like date yeah or have anything serious and she sh- he was throwing all the signals out that he just he so, would have been fine know, with it and I then he gets think, butthurt about it yeah, so he did hard. a little bit but no but he mostly that got that legitimately i felt like later when they both did have feelings and she then like yeah made him feel bad now to to her at the point, she did just say, it's not like all the time. I just need this now. Right. right. Like, yeah. and he took it as like never and whatever, but I didn't think he actually re- reacted that badly in the beginning. I just think that he was thrown from, he had her very much on a pedestal. That's true. She like stepped off and he was like, what the hell? What just happened? Like, yeah, that's true. Her, yeah. His, she was his, like, like, no, I like your, I like yeah. rough sex and I would like you to do it now. And I like yes. to like, they have sex in a closet. I didn't write this down. I don't know why I didn't, but I'll describe the scene for you, dear listeners. Instead, they are having sex and it's angry sex. Cause he's mad at her at this point in the story. And so they go into the closet. Cause she goes into this like little command post they've made in the dad's house. So they go into the closet and they're banging and then in come Alyssa and Sam. And they're like, see, he's not here. And instead and of Sam's like, like, I heard something. And I heard like, something. No, he's not here. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's leave. And instead of what you, he was going to expect that she was going to do, which is like push him off. And like, she like basically starts like pulling him in more. So he's thrusting into her and he like covers her mouth so that they won't hear. And she gets real turned on by the fact that they're right outside the door. Yeah. Yeah. Shattered is like, shattered is uh just shattered it. She's a good little girl, big girl now. Yeah, as we always say on the podcast, if she says she wants it, give it to her now, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh although so yeah, I I did though, aside from that like scene, mm-hmm. I felt like their sex was pretty I thought that was their best scene. I do feel like, again, like I remember, so it must be in future books when they have sex in the future. Cause I remember there's a scene where they have sex at the new office when they open it. And it was like, like, I do remember there being so obviously their sex and their storylines continue as subplots throughout like the next books. Yeah. It's just been so long. It's like, weirdly, I just like skipped forward and reread book. This was book one. I reread book eight and nine. Oh. And, and little like moments of the earlier books with Sam and Alyssa, which was like books like what, five, six, and seven. But I didn't reread anything in books two through five or two through four. Yeah. So 
I'm a little at a loss. If you guys are Suzanne Brackman fans, please drop us a comment with what we are talking about on Instagram and tell us what is happening. Where it was, which book. I also do want to just, again, quickly preface that this is election week. And normally, you guys, I take a lot of notes. I can tell you right now, my notes are sparse. (laughs) 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 So it's still going to be a fun time. It's still going to be a good fun time. I am bringing us back on topic because we're going to go. So you have talked that it is part of a series and you told us the genre. Yes. How'd you feel about cover art? Oh, uh, please bring me back to task. We skipped the cover art. I thought this cover, which has like a silhouetted couple, um, kind of overlooking some sort of harbor, uh, was very old school. It, It gave me a lot of nostalgia vibes. I kind of thought the silhouettes like gave me a little bit of the suspense vibe, but I didn't like, it didn't remind me of the other books. Cause I remember better the later, um, the later ones where they're still silhouetted, but like they did like kind of like um, lighting effects. Mm -hmm. So it looked like they were running or like there was like action happening. So I remember those ones better than I remember this book. But I, I mean, I, I think it like, you know, gave me the nostalgia, like vibes. So Bridget, I'm putting, I'm putting the, the whatchamacallit book up to my, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, is that the new cover? Oh, hey. I don't know. It's like, it's the cover on the, the whatever oh, library on book Kindle. that I, no, it's on the library book that I downloaded. Oh, okay. Um, so I don't know how old this is. I don't think it's the original, but what I, so it's, it's a listeners. It is a uh, shirtless man um, yes. where you just, you see it like kind of as somewhat of his head is cut off. He's kind of looking down and uh, you stop basically at his, his belt line. And, um, one of the things I really like about this book cover is that sometimes when you see a shirtless man on the cover, it looks like a sculpture where you're like, oh, I'm just not allowed to touch that. Like <laughs> I never in my life, <laughs> I never in my life will touch <laughs> a man that looks like that. And, um, and, and I actually kind of like, do not say that. It's no, I, and, you. and you know what? Abs are there for you. I just don't think I even want to. Um, yeah, but you don't know what's under those parts. You live in Colorado. What do you know what's under a sweatshirt or a jacket? You don't know who's packing what. Oh, I you can I, you can you can stumble tell. you can, you can stumble care. upon it. I could I could. Um, I think for me it has more to do with like the amount of time they must spend in the gym is yeah, someone a lot. I don't a lot. Want to As you know, I dated a beefcake, and it's a lot of commitment it's to protein so shakes. It's a commitment. lot of commitment to the gym. <laughs> it's a lot of commitment to skipping Sunday brunches. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really I was like very know. fit dating him though. I was very fit. <laughs> Yeah. I don't so know if I ever told I like you I ran guy... two miles in 15 minutes on a treadmill while I was what? dating him. I was fucking cruising. I was also filled with For rage you. because For I did you. not like him that much. But at that time, it was towards that yeah. relationship. But he was um, a beefcake. Yeah. But I like that his body is like actually kind of real. Like you can tell he's still very strong. But yeah. I also like I could get down, I could get down with that that body. I um, would like to be the spritzer at one of those things where you're just <laughs> like, you know what? You're not quite, you know, oh, it's too wet. Let me wipe off some water. Oh no, let me spritz some more. On. Oh, let me we wipe. Need, we, let's just put some baby oil. Where's the baby oil? oil? On, it's still so that we oil. can have driplets going down. Yes. Yeah. Little oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I think that should happen. There's. I um, feel like, didn't that happen in a book that you read? That I'm was like the sure. girl's job. That feels right, but I don't know. Doesn't it? Like a year ago, I feel like there was that a feels book right. that we were reading that, feels... that the heroine. Like, I mean, I know me and Shani have like... talked about it on the podcast yeah. before about oh, so wanting it to be our job. Yeah. <laughs> there are, there are, we've talked to some um, authors who get to go to their cover shoots and they get to meet the models and check it out. And they think it's great, which I think is super fun. A lot of them shoot in LA or Vegas. So Obviously, that will be something me and Shawnee are checking out in the future. Mm-hmm. We'll just be showing up. You guys need a PA? What you guys need? Crafty? You need a helper? 
We could be helpful. They're like, do you do makeup? Sure. What kind? Of, sure. I How makeup. well? How do well need? do we do? <laughs> How well do you need it done? Um, <laughs> so. Yeah. No. So another thing about this, because it was written twenty years ago, um, mm-hmm. and is the whole cell phone changes. Did mm. you think to yourself during the plot of sometimes being like, they're like waiting by landlines, yeah. and they're like. Yeah. Then, or like or the internet at David's house, like, it's so, oh, like they're, they're gonna use David's house because David has like the good scanner and David yeah. has like <laughs> yes. the good internet for his projects. And I was fucking that part I thought was funny because and like the, the her dad, Kelly's dad, calls the phone company to get extra phone lines. Yes, for them. he gets and like eight like, more phone so lines. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> so Cute. Things are oh. so hard before people like computers in their hands. <laughs> like, <laughs> as much as I have problems with a lot about technology and like now raising my kids, I have to be very conscious of it. I'm also like, I have a super computer in my palm. Like yeah. I can find out these things, this like entire computers that were like bigger than the yeah. room you're in. Yeah. Not as powerful not do, as your cell phone. Could yeah. not do. Yourself. Yeah, when he was like, "Oh, we need a scanner," I'm like, "Snap a pic of that, text it over, bro." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So coincidentally, <coughs> Mallory that- is taking pictures of David, who works at this hotel where they think the bomb is going to happen, and where the bad guy is staying. And they haven't been able to see him in surveillance, but she's just taking pictures of David at work from afar because he let her borrow his super expensive camera with the telephoto lens. And she happens to snap pictures of the terrorist. And Tom goes over. That was one of my favorite scenes. So oh, Mallory saves the night, makes the decision that David is going to be her first and that she loves him and that they're going to be together. And they share like a very sexy first kiss and have sex. And the next day, her mom is like, she never came home. But she left a note and he's like, well, then why do you need me? And he's, she's like, go get it. She's with this boy, blah, 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 blah. So he goes and sees like, condom, it's a studio. So he sees condom wrappers like all over the floor. And I was like, oh, I've been there. The nostalgia. And she's like, yeah, but I left a note. And David like clearly like shakes his hand and is like clearly in love with her. And so he's like, yeah, cool. I'm going to bounce. And then he sees the photo and he's like, where did you take this? Where did you find this? Did he see you? And like they go into they like end up helping with the surveillance and sort of helping with the whole takedown. Yeah. I mean, the last like two chapters are tense, like suspenseful. Yeah. yeah. The, the buildup, not so much. Yeah. Um, uh, which to be fair was partially because he was waffling and being like, it could be my head injury. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like imagining just, things. Yeah. And yeah. it also could be true, yeah. but my gut usually teaches, takes me in the right direction. And, um, yeah. Uh, what did you think about the how much time was spent on the World War II flashbacks? I did not like it. I, for the most part, I, Suzanne Brockman does this a lot. I was not given permission to call her Suze, so you, you know you can call her Suze. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, um, she does this a lot. She does she, and to some extent, I think it's really kind of a way for her to honor veterans in a different way. Right. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing when I talked about the Mike Muldoon one where John uh, DaCosta's dad is getting um, or no a grandpa, reward. grandpa, not dad. She's an orphan, I think. So or uh, yeah. So uh, grandpa's getting an award and mm-hmm. um, or gets invited to that. Uh, and uh, there's tons of flashbacks from when he is kind of getting started. Um, so. <sighs> So I, I can kind of understand it from that perspective in some ways, but sometimes I just really don't care about it. And uh, I felt like. Did you want her to be alive? Because I was, uh, here I'm hoping, because here's the thing about flashbacks. I think that they are great. She actually is a huge World War II history buff, which I think is also part of the reason that she put so much of that. But 
I was hoping that they had both fallen in love with her. And for whatever reason, like she didn't love Joe, but maybe she like couldn't be with the other guy for, you know, cause it was the war and people got separated and they couldn't find each other. And now this reporter had tracked down the village, had found her and was going to bring her. And she was going to be this old lady. And he's this no, old I man. Told, I remember that she had died. So I well, uh, the only reason I wanted it is because that to me makes it a reason why I care about yeah. the plot. Cause I don't ca- like, I don't care. I don't. Yeah. Cause care. unless it's an actual love story, like, like, I, and, and it's, it gave the context of like why Charles is a, out, becomes an alcoholic. Right. And like, why, yeah. it, you know, and so it explains that whole back history. I was like, but did we need it? Or like, why he's this grumpy old man or why these yeah. two never married and right. Um, well, I guess he was already married, but um, <sighs> yeah, I just, I didn't either. I did like their grumpy old man relationship. I like and, their best friends. They're yeah. best friends. And I also kind of, I thought it was super uh, when Tom is complaining that he's never once been told that his, his uncle was this like badass in, yeah. in World War II. And he's like, he did what? He got what? Yeah. This is what? Like, how yeah, he was like behind me? behind enemy lines for years, like yeah. sabotaging the Germans and Nazis and living down the street from them. Yeah. And um Yeah, and he's like, how and I, I would feel that especially that like gypped, really... considering that I'm an actual Navy SEAL. And you're like, you don't think I could have used some of this knowledge? Or like we could have bonded on a deeper level from all this danger in the missions. Like I've been undercover too. It's scary as fuck. Like Right. But I think yeah. a lot of people from World War II just never talked about living yeah. through again, yeah. you know? Um, I, so thought, I thought that was actually I, a really real thing. But. I thought it was really cute that as soon as they found out that there was baby danger, they got so excited. They're like, oh, we're going to go stake out this hotel. Yeah. They're not, no one's going to s- s- expect Suspect two old, old men, men playing, chess. playing chess. Like, <laughs> we're going to keep our eyes open. Don't you worry. Like, they got yeah. so into it. And I thought that that was like the most adorable like they yeah. were feuding about this article and, you know, Charles didn't want him to talk about Joe to talk about some things. And Joe's like, it's time for it all to come out. And, you know, I also like that Tom like put them in their place and was like, you guys need to shut this shit down. Like how many more nice days are you going to have together? He's going to die. You want to go let him die while you guys are just being idiots, like be best friends, you know, go sit and watch a ball game, go fishing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I thought that was uh, just a nice message for everyone. Like, you don't know, you don't know. Well, and actually, and from the very start, I mean, yes, Kelly's a doctor who deals with, you know, she had just had a patient that was diagnosed with cancer, but, um, when she had seized Tom and obviously her dad is diagnosed with cancer and has three months to live. So I loved that. Like some of the first things she says are like, no, things are really bad. I'm here because he's dying. He's got three months and like, there's no beating around the bush about it, mm-hmm. about like the diagnosis. There's no beating around the bush about like his alcoholism. Yep. Um, there's, so I, I felt like that really helped one move the plot forward. Right. Yep. Like, cause we didn't have any like, yeah. you know, me, weird yeah. stuff that was being hidden. Um, but like the bluntness was just kind of refreshing. I feel like a lot of I just think in society in general, we dance around things like Cer- that. that certainly are like death, but yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I liked that that was part of her story of her coming like out of that, like, oh, we're rich waspy people and we don't share our feelings and we, everything is fine and everything is perfect and everything is nice. And that was how she was raised. And like, my dad would never let me kiss someone in public. He'd be like at, you know, earlier in my life, he would have been mortified. Like, and she's just like, no, fuck all that. Like, I like being claimed in public. I like being kissed in public. I like, you know, telling him how I feel like I'm not going to hide this shit anymore. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a really strong character moment for her Mm -hmm. to just be like everything is and then be like you know what everything's not fine it all sucks I'm pissed my life is terrible and I'm sad and when she like yells at her dad that one time Mm -hmm. um yeah I did like also alcoholism wise that he did not apologize for everything he like kind of sat there he really didn't say in that whole scene where she's just unloading on him he says like one sentence basically 
And I thought that was also very truthful because, um, you know, some people get that catharsis and some people get that, I'm sorry. And some people get that, um, amends and that acknowledgement of what they put them through. And uh, most people, I would say, or maybe a lot of people, maybe I won't say most, but a lot of people don't, even if Mm -hmm. you confront them, you don't get what you're hoping for or what you're needing. Um, that was nice yeah i agree i agree good (laughs) i i don't know what else i want to talk about aside from i just really liked the last few chapters because i do really like this i do like this and i like to know like who's running up what stairwell oh so and so is going over there i'm watching your back we're splitting up Oh my God, I got to defuse a bomb. Call him in. And he's like, I got Wi Fi. And he like run, David runs across the street because he's like, I have a computer and I can like show, you know. And Mallory's really? like, why am I the only one in here? I could go do something. Yeah. yeah no, I yeah. agree. And like, yeah, I think, I think that's one of the reasons that she's such a great writer is that she does that kind of exposition of movement and time and place and, you know, yeah. it, the action she does so well that it's so, it was it's so mm-hmm. effortless and there's so yeah. much there's so much emotion mm-hmm. in the action so there's a yeah. lot of dialogue which i think is very important to keep the yep. dialogue going but there's also a lot of like emotion like mallory gets held for a hot second by yeah. the and he's like in his mind you know you feel his sort of you know underneath all his seal training you feel his like panic a little bit even though he doesn't outwardly show anything because he's and you hear you know and then in his ear he hears Alyssa saying take one step to the right lieutenant and like she's so calm and he's like instantly calm because he knows she's about to shoot this guy in the face yeah and she does and drops him and I like that layering of the action with the emotion with the like with the actual like uh, showing instead of telling what's happening so good so good. All of that. All of that. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's, it's one of the, it's, it's one of the reasons she's such an exceptional like yeah. author. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and so because this book had very little of it, I felt, I, I distinctly felt it missing. I did too. I did um, too. And I also feel like that maybe as she went along, she moved more and more and more to that in the yeah. books, because mm-hmm. I do think that the beginning ones do tend to have slightly less of that sometimes. Yeah. Um, For sure. I think, I mean, all authors definitely develop as they go forward, or I hope they do. I mean, certainly if you're writing your 10th book, you would hope that's better than your first book. Yeah. And uh, more Assuming comfort. you have a good story. So. Yeah, true. And a good editor and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I just appreciate the fact that she just like, I mean, she's just a bad, badass she just gave zero bucks. She was like, Oh, I'm one thing she said in the interview that I think you'd like is she's like, I kept writing it in and I made them say it to my face that they're racist or that they're bigoted and they refuse to like publish my book with these characters. And I really appreciate that. She just kept on forcing the issue and never backed down. And, you know, and then like, I would say her, two most popular couples are Sam and Alyssa and Jules and um, Chadwick. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, a biracial couple and a, I think that's also partially because of how long you watch them. Oh, hundred percent. That was the reason, you know what? That was another reason guys. I'm going to defend myself one more time here. Cause I had reasons when I originally chose this book. The other thing was I didn't want to read, like we, you can't read Sam and Alyssa's book without reading the three prior or the four prior books. Cause mm-hmm. it doesn't pack the same punch. Same mm-hmm. with Jules Cassidy, like the book where he meets um, that I read hot target book eight is a great mm-hmm. book standalone. Mm-hmm. But I also already have previously read the book. So I already knew he was Alyssa's partner. I knew all about Alyssa and Sam. Like I already had context for where he was coming from and like mm-hmm. his arc. And without that, I, I think you, you know, it's great when you know characters over. That's why I love series so much. 
because oh, yeah. I love paranormal you fall romance because you yeah. fall in love and then well, and eight you books want later, them certain things and then you're like god you're being a shithead why yeah. are you being a shithead right now yeah. which I totally told Sam a lot yeah and and <laughs> and you get to like see like in hot target you get to see Tom and Kelly and Kelly's pregnant mm-hmm. and so you get like they're not a big part of the book but you get to see them and and yeah, have some moments with Kelly with with Cosmo Chief Cosmo yeah. and and like that's such a fun thing to revisit all these What's, people. Oh man, which one's Hot Target? Is that um That's where they go to LA and they're on the film shoot and she's a producer yes. and her okay. brother's the star of the movie. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then there's well so the other one I wa- listened to listened to um the other one I uh, read I probably I must have read a bunch of books this summer. I was like, oh I read this one too. Um the one where they're stuck in like the snowstorm and like what is it north somewhere in like upper new york or something like that and um it's cosmo it plays a pretty prominent role in this one too and so does jules and um well actually that's not jules is like a side character towards at, at some point but um cosmo thinks he's like in love with uh this girl and she totally <laughs> shuts it down and um yeah anyway so uh i was one of the early because cosmos the one isn't cosmo the one that's like always cracking jokes and like never serious and like no no cosmos the chief who's like oh he never all about business so that must be a different one because who who is it then um, I feel like I remember that when I'm like scrubbing through descriptions. And right there's now. like the serial killer that they find that uh, someone gets um, gets kidnapped, and then someone always gets kid. It must is it into the storm? Yeah, that's what it is. Frozen corner of New Hampshire. Yes. So let's see. Despite the frigid winter temperatures, tension smolders between veteran SEAL Petty Officer Mark Jank Jenkins. Oh, I I did like Mark Jank I Jenkins. I love Jenkins. And former cop turned troubleshooter Lindsay Fontaine after an impulsive night goes awry. And then suddenly, Tracy Shapiro, the troubleshooter's new receptionist, vanishes. While That's playing the role who, of hostage. I, Tracy is the one he thinks he's in love with, but I can't remember who it is. Um, is it, uh, what's his face? The, uh, uh, he's the one that's like, always Tracy ends up with someone else, right? No, I think they end up together. Oh, is it Rick? No, 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 it's not Rick. Who does she end up with? um, Or maybe it's it's not Tracy. Tracy. uh, Anyways, into the storm is book 10, you guys. And that was a very good. good one as well. It's a very good one. Yeah. I feel like the books just got better and better. Yeah. All right, you guys, well, let's take a quick break. We're going to come back yeah. with some ratings because now that I'm saying the books got better and better, I want to know what Anne rated this book. So we're <laughs> taking a quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Woohoo! Hello, best friends. Thank you for being loyal listeners of Romance at a Glance. We're so happy to have you. If you'd like to support us further, head over to Patreon, where you can become one of our patrons. We've got a lot of great perks, such as merch and a super secret discussion group, where Bridget and I talk to you directly about all things romance and all things nasty. So come on over. And now, back to our show. Okay, and we're back. So, Anne, what did you think about our fair heroine? Um, Dr. Kelly. Dr. Kelly. Um, so I, I gave her a solid three. I was not like, I think I just wasn't a hundred percent on this book. And so it's kind of just like, uh, I liked her, right? Like there's yeah. some great yeah. things about her. And yeah. I also sort of just like, didn't care about her sometimes. Yes. Um, and anytime that I like your side characters better than your main characters, yes. it's probably just saying that they need some, you know, yeah, need some love. Okay, well, even though Mallory was not a, they were the subplot, what did you give Mallory? I gave her like a, almost, probably a five. Yeah, I thought for she was being great. a like, freaking 17 year old. And like, she goes from like this like angsty, I wish life could be better to like, oh, I can open my heart and find love and like, I can support things and I can be strong and I can get through this. And yeah, I, yeah, I'm not my mom and I've been holding a job down for a year and a half already. Yeah. Like, I can go to school, I can do all these things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I thought it was awesome. Yeah. I also gave her a five. I gave, I also gave Kelly a three. I, I gave spoiler I'm jumping ahead. I also gave Tom a three. I Me just too. feel like, I also just feel like this book. I liked this book. I like Suzanne Brockman, obviously. I love some of the future characters. Like yes. Sam and Alyssa fives, Jules Cassidy fives, Cosmo. That book was great. I, I just read that. I tore through it in a night. I should have been sleeping. I have young children. As you guys know, I had to wake up so early and I stayed up to like two 30. I was like, only like one more chapter, just one more chapter, just yeah. the entire rest of this book. And yeah. I didn't regret it. Didn't regret a single moment. I did that with like almost every single one of these books. The first time I read them, yeah. I am so sorry, people that I'm yawning. <laughs> Shawnee's gonna cut out your yawns. She's oh. now we're gonna have to leave that one in just because now we've talked to the people. Hello, people. <laughs> Hello, people. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. It's super late. We've been having a stressful week in elections. That's why we're gonna keep this episode be, short and dirty for you guys. Early. I had work work workers done at my house this morning at seven. So it's been a it's been, it's been a doozy. day. Better you know, day. life happens outside of romance novel talking. So shocker, Bridget and I though <laughs> have all have definitely had our late nights. Suzanne Brock, also, you have definitely been the reason for some lack of sleep in our lives. A hundred percent. I would say it's mostly my fault. I, <laughs> um, especially when I get excited about things, because then I just I can't stop talking. As you guys maybe have realized after being fans of this podcast. And also, I just get really excited about a lot of things. Uh I um, also, in case you guys did not know this, used to read the entire romance novel out loud to Anne as we drove across the country every year. So we would choose like one or two or three, depending on, you know, where we were, you know, how much time we had. And then so instead seven, of just, hour instead drive, of just read a lot getting of an songs. audiobook version of the book, <laughs> was, okay. well, Bridget, <laughs> I don't know why, why we never did that. Now we have, we have cassette version. tapes. I think we had a CD player. No, one point, my car we? never had a CD player. <laughs> That's, <And> right. So, <laughs> That's right. That's right. And so but even so we could have done cassette tapes. Maybe. We would have had, yes. But then we would have had to like. Change the they're tape. not always well and then you never know if you can find them in the library and like and they're not always good audio people. that too so i would read the entire novel out loud to she gets car sick spoiler for her you guys in case you're ever wondering if you want Anne to read you a book in the car don't choose her she can't do it for more than like 30 minutes and then she gets car sick <laughs> so she would take breaks from driving for very short amounts of time while and read to me but most of the rest of the time I read, which is actually now that I'm thinking about it, probably why I don't like audiobooks and I prefer to read because I always like to see the book. Even if someone's reading to me, like when dad used to read to me as a kid, I always had to see it because yeah. if I can't see it, it's very much harder for yeah. me to retain. You're much more visual. Yeah. Vi- visual. <laughs> <laughs> visual learner. Yeah. And I loved it. It was great. And we'd read the sassy scenes. My friends used to get so embarrassed because I'd be like, oh my God, you guys are reading this great book. And then I would read them like three pages <laughs> in a row of like the steamiest shit in the world. They're like, what are you reading? And I was like, I'm reading what everyone should be reading. Hello, this is beautiful. And it's wonderful. It's so emotional. I'm feeling my feels, getting the sexy times. Everyone should read romance. I mean, you guys already know that because you're reading, you're here, you're listening. You're already a fan. <laughs> All right. Did you think he was a McDreamy or a McSteamy? A McDreamy. I did. I felt too. like he was like, he, uh, I, you know, I think I, I said it at the end, right? Like he goes to her, like, I want to go for the, yeah. their record of, you know, being friends. And then he like adds like, you know, let's sleep together and like have really good Get sexy married, times. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> where, where I'm the only person who knows how good you are with your mouth. Like, mm-hmm. like, you know, so there, there definitely was like a little bit of extra bit. Um, yeah. Uh, mostly just a McDreamy. Mostly and McDreamy. he's also a McDreamy in like future books too. I agree. Like I feel like I agree. He, he becomes this like father figure in some ways to a bunch oh. of the characters. Oh, I totally She kind of becomes agree. like the, you know. The, yeah, she's like the go-to the woman in their lives that they could go to with their problems. <laughs> they can like yeah. with the women when they meet her are like so happy they can be friends with her. Yeah, I do remember liking her more in future books. Um, yeah, she totally is like the one that like makes sure the women feel accepted and 
like yeah. and like holds their hands when they're all like out in these dangerous missions and kind of yeah. keeps everyone together and, mm-hmm. and takes care of people because she's a doctor did you have a favorite line in the book um yeah well yes uh so it's kind of towards the beginning and uh she literally just like took a swallow of lemonade and he like watches her uh swallow and he goes lemonade his mainstay fantasy had always started with Kelly inviting him in for a glass of lemonade. And I was like, <laughs> was yeah, bow, was wow. I was like, of course an 18 year old, like that has her on a pedestal is like, and she's probably offered him lemonade before because well, because they, they drank lemonade in, all the time in the tree yeah, house. And like, yeah, they like lived in a seaside town. She was 15. So it's yeah. not like they were doing other things. Right. Yep. I thought that was, I thought that was really fun. Um, Mine was, uh, I think Mallory says this, I think about David's friend, but his smile says to me, I love myself so much. I'd suck my own dick. If only I could reach it with my mouth. (laughs) I just (laughs) thought that was so funny. She totally Uh, said that. So many good quips. Yeah. 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 Good quips. Um, yeah. I didn't have a good pound town quote, you guys. You guys, I also read a physical copy of this book. And for the podcast, I would say like 80% of the books I read are on Kindle, maybe maybe even 90 now for the podcast, because I could take notes directly in the app, like in the Kindle as I'm reading. And I just like, you guys, if you go on Goodreads and find me, I have like 30 to 100 highlights per book of like favorite sections, sections I want to reference, like plot points I want to talk about. I'll just highlight two paragraphs. So I remember what's going on. And that is why I always have like 10 quotes because I always highlight so much. And I'm like, I love these books so much. But yeah. It's much book. harder to do in a physical book, especially since we were raised, like not F them up. Yeah. <laughs> when people like write in their books, it stresses me out. And, and do you remember in high school and college and they're like, you should annotate in your book for this class. And I was like, I can't do that. I have a notebook for notes and I have a yeah. book for books. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and do you remember, uh, what was it in Gilmore girls when, um, yeah, just writes in her book. I would have flipped the fuck out. And <laughs> cause he was always writing in his, <laughs> I, was like, I would have lost my goddamn uh, mind. If he defaced uh, one of my books, <laughs> I would have gotten it back and been like, you're an asshole. Never speak to me again or buy me a new book. Yeah. <laughs> but also I love Jess and I am I scanning Jess and Rory forever. And I hated the revival. Come at me. Come Ugh. at me. The revival. Blew. That was bad. Yeah. So Let's much. I was so pissed that like, I was like, why do we have to end this this way that like you getting pregnant? Like, okay. That was so stupid. But the main problem I had with it is that they were always nice people, like kind mm-hmm. people. Yeah. They were working class. Yep. And in the revival, they're like rich bitches who are just like in lawn chairs mocking people. Yeah. And she went from being on the campaign trail as a news reporter and she only had one article published. I'm like, I just had an article published in Frolic, you guys. Like she didn't have one article published. That made no sense to me. And then like, even if that happened, she was always a hustler, hard worker. Like she would have been working. She wouldn't be unemployed. No. Like just doing nothing. No. There was like, like, she would have been writing. Like that was so stupid. I did like the scene, of course, where Jess comes back because Milo is a smoke show. And when he's like, you should write about you and your mom. And I was like, and when he looks at her through the window, I was like, I hated this revival, but I want part two where Jess is in it every single second. Yeah. They're married now. Yeah. And I thought the ending where she gets pregnant makes no sense because no. hello, she's on birth control. She's not an idiot. And yeah, that was stupid. Yeah. And also just... they were so mean to her boyfriend. Yeah. They, like, it was just the bad. mom couldn't remember his name. And I was like, Lorelai? Lorelai would have been like, Rory, you should break up with him. You don't even like him. Like yeah. she was like so challenging it, to Rory about every guy she dated. Yeah. I didn't like it. No. I didn't like it. No. Did not like and it. And back to the unsung hero, which Thank we did you. like. We, we did. just didn't love. Yeah. Um, so my favorite review mm-hmm. 
um, was from Alyssa on Goodreads. Mm-hmm. And it says, this was pretty good, but a little slow. I also didn't buy the past history. She was a kid when they knew each other before. So this was like insta love, but, and this is a big, but I was so happy to see a good heroine. This is the kind of woman I want to read about in my books in her thirties, has a career, not a virgin, communicates like an adult, asks for what she wants, treats people nicely, doesn't have to act like a bitch to prove how badass she is, doesn't run off doing, I don't know what TSTL thing is, is, but, um, I will totally read the next in the series at some point, just because I feel like I'm in, uh, in a desert starving for water when it comes to finding decent heroines. And then even the teenage girl who's having a first love relationship is better than most heroines in current romance. So such a nice change. And I was like, yeah, Yeah. I, I really, I did enjoy it. It was a solid book. It was a little bit slow for me. Um, and, uh, and I definitely love you know, the series, the troubleshooter series and entirely plan to reread, um, since I've already read all. Um, so Suze, Suze, I will read every single book that you, I think I have read every single book that you put up, but I will continue to read them. Mine was from Dino Jess, the book eating dinosaur. Um, (laughs) she has a great name on Goodreads and also had a good review. Um, I'm going to skip parts of it because they're not relevant to what I liked about her review. Um, Okay. Uh, The secondary romance story of David and Mallory though. Yes. (laughs) I was all about their romance. Their love story is what kept me coming back to this book. Young love. So adorable, sweet and fluffy and delicious. I wish they were the focus couple instead of stupid Kelly and Tom. Um, I didn't find this book particularly suspenseful, but I did keep coming back to read more about David and Mallory. So it wasn't a total bust. Um, I don't agree that Kelly and Tom were as terrible as she thought they were. However, I do definitely concur that David and Mallory's sweet young love and like the, like her coming out of her shell and realizing that he actually likes her for her and then her liking him for him and like not wanting to be with his douchey hot friend, but wanting to actually be with him. Um, I thought it was very sweet. Also, his best friend was a creep. We didn't even talk about that yet, but that dude was a creep and a half. And I was like, David, you need to drop that fool. Yeah. When he came into the room after they were clearly together and she was in his bed naked underneath yes. the blanket. And then he like tried to sit down. And I was like, bro, you better back off. Her Navy SEAL brother's uncle is going to fucking kill you and bury you in the woods. Yeah. A shit load I mean, of lie. He was definitely a creeper. Thankfully, he stepped off yeah. as soon as she said something. But like, yeah. Yeah. Or like, her uncle's like on the ground. Yeah. And, he and he's just like, yeah, I'm just out. Like I yeah. decided for this. And I was like, you, okay. Yeah. I was like, you're terrible. I also felt that that's like one of those relationships that doesn't last. Right. Like that David yeah. was already kind of like, I mean, we're sort of friends and he helps me with this one thing. Right. Right. But like, like it, or it like, it's like, we've been best friends since kindergarten. So like, and he does take pictures for me, which is nice. <laughs> and as soon as I go to college, we're never going to speak again. Like, right. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. So you guys, it sounds like both me and Anne would say that you should definitely recommend uh, reading this series. I think this book isn't as important for context as I thought it was going to be. I think you no. could probably skip it and go right to book two. Um, yes. I don't think that you should skip further into the series than... No. Hold, please, as I Google. Um, I think it's book three, but let me just double check. Not to mention, they're just like good books. So like read, a, you know, like read this or don't read this. I mean, and. But I'm saying, I'm saying if you like, didn't want to, if like, because this one isn't that thrilling. If you wanted to skip, I, I don't remember book two all that well, but definitely you should start at book three minimally. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't know if you remember that one. That's the one with Lieutenant Terry and Senior Chief Stan. Do you remember Senior oh, Chief Stan? Oh, I love them. The helicopter Senior pilots. Chief Stan. I know. They're great. Book three. So yeah. um, book two, I don't remember as well. Book two is Meg Moore. She's a translator at the embassy uh-huh. in Europe. Um, and John Nilsson is her. Yeah, Lieutenant John Nilsson. I don't remember that book very well. But I remember, I remember Senior Chief. I love Senior yeah. Chief. Oh, yeah. Who doesn't um, like Senior Chief? And yeah, so doesn't. I would so, say if if you 
really want to get into the suspense romance. Suzanne Brockman is a titan. You should for sure do it. I don't think this book was as important as the first in the series, but I do think you should start probably at book two if you don't want to read this one quickly. Um, mm-hmm. And certainly book three. Do not skip past book three. Don't do it. And and then Wild Card is like book four. And yes. yeah, and he's he's got this great scene where like, <laughs> the first time they have sex um, at, with Savannah, uh, he, right after like the next, he has to go to work, right? So he leaves her at the house, leaves her a note being like, stay this long, I'll be back at, you know, right after my like thing. He goes and goes, I mean, so I got something to ask you guys. <laughs> so basically, so, I mean, is it normal for someone to come like right away? And they're like, well, what do you mean? He's like, I mean, like, like right away and they're like well i mean what happened he's like i mean i don't know like seven times like and they're just like no that's not that's normal, not normal. Like, not normal. <laughs> and but i love just like innocence you can just totally tell that he's just like he's just so geeky and ridiculously smart that like the female part of it is he's just like wait uh something something here like <laughs> Because yeah. he was always with that one girl from high school. Um, yeah. Who, like, you know, put him through the ringer. Anyway, I loved Wildcard. There's so many of them that I love. Read all the books. Read them all. Read them all. You Read heard it here all. first. You guys, <laughs> that's, all, that's all she wrote at, at the time of recording. We hope that this has brought a little bit of light into your life and a little bit of stress relief and a little bit of chuckles. And, and if you are with a veteran or know a veteran or are a veteran, thank you for your service to be of service to the country and to serve in a way that many people are not. Absolutely. On that note, until then, may your books be your lover and your hand, your best friend. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to our channel to get new episodes, clips, and more. And click here to watch our previous reviews and author interviews.